What is going on YouTube and welcome back to another day of uh, 100 days to master Python. Uh, so now we are in video number five or day five. So again, you should be doing today when you code, you should be doing day one, two, three, four and five. Uh, always going back and moving forward. Um, today we're going to be hitting a, a, a subject of Python called classes. Now I know we haven't hit much in it and you're going to see some pieces of code here that you've never seen before and that will not make sense to you. Uh, do not stress it. Don't go all, all, all over online searching for it. Just do the code, learn the idea that I'm presenting here because we're going to be utilizing classes a lot more later on when we do different uh, Python projects. Um, things as simple as even uh, tic-tac-toe or, or chess. When we create these games in Python, we're going to be util utilizing classes a lot. So just for now, just get the code and get what I'm saying for this piece of code. Don't worry about every single abstract piece of it. Um, or you'll drive yourself nuts. So let me clear you and I have the console going. Let me make sure I'm running my debugger. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to F8 through this. So what we're doing is we want to create a class and you can see I have class. I named it mama. Doesn't matter what the hell you name it that has two methods. Um, and the two methods are get string, which is grab a string from the input. And I'm defining that method. I could have called it anything. And then print string, which is printing that string in uppercase letters in entirety. Printing a get print string and get string are not functions or methods or anything that exists. We're defining it. Well, you notice we're defining two methods, but we also have a initialization of the self. Um, you'll see that under class object. That an initialization of the self has to do with initializing the class mama. Um, and that has to do with how code is executed in term, when you run Python. If you don't have an initialization, uh, th this function of an initialization, then when you execute code, it just runs through it. But when you actually have an initialization uh, in, in the beginning of the code or through the code, it waits. It will, it, it loads it, but it's not going to execute the code until it's called upon which is the more appropriate way to, to utilize code. But sometimes you do want some aspects of code just run through the moment the script is run. Uh, so that's why you'd say, well, why do you even have it? But that's why you have it. So class mama is, is an object. And then we have semicolon. Let's say F8, F8 through this. We didn't do do Now we're going. So now we're on defining initialization and the initialization is self. Self confuses a lot of people. Uh, line seven self dot S equals we just have uh, the empty quotes. Now the self is allowing Python and it, and it does, it does have a, a strong purpose. Um, self is calling, it's, it's telling Python, I'll explain this, that we want to use that definition of what we're, what we're defining applied to itself in the class mama. So at this, you could even get into like global and local variables, global and local definitions. Um, the developer of Python, the original creator of Python, he has a whole blog post on why you have to have the self and why you can't get rid of it. And it does have a, a, a real function. If you got rid of it, you would actually hit in, hit into um, a pickle, and it's primarily with different global and local variable properties. So now we're going to define get, uh, get string, and we're utilizing the self, and self.s equals input is give me a string. So when I do, 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 when I F8 through this, it's not, and you're going to say, why didn't it print anything? See, that has input, give me a string. Because we're going line by line right now, but this hasn't executed yet because it's a class and definitions, and those things are only executed when they're called upon. And we haven't called upon them yet. All we've done so far is gone line by line in turn of debugging. So then it goes down to X equals mama, and I have an open parentheses. So all I'm doing now, x variable is calling the class mama, but we have, we're not passing anything through it. So let's see what happens when we F8 through that. So we F8 through it, and I can see that now there is a main, main class dot mama, which, has an ob, which is an object, and it's at, and it's telling me the memory location within my particular system where that class is going to be stored uh, in its memory place. And I'm going to F8, it's just going to print x, so I can see on the right-hand side that it's printing out that um, main initialization file, which is dot mama. It's an object at that memory location, nothing too fancy. Um, so as you can see, I just have here calling a class will print out the mama memory location. We just saw that. And if I want to actually execute the function from the class, I need to call it. Makes sense, right? 
So what I'm going to do is let me get rid of my hash tags there. So now I'm doing x dot get string and x dot print string. So y x well x is calling the class mama. That's what x is right now. X is the variable that has mama class tied to it. And then I'm calling the get string function and I'm call a method. I'm sorry. And I'm calling the print string method that we defined. So what do you think is going to happen when we execute this x dot get string? Well, if I look up in my under class mama, the definition of get string, it's going to use the self, which is the class mama dot s, oops, a daisy, equals input, give me a string. So you should say that it's going to ask us for uh, to, to get a string. So I'm going to run now that we got rid of those hashtags. And you're going to clear out. And we're going to go through, you're going to see we're going to go through our definition, x mama, print x mama. And now we are, give me a string. So there we go. Now I'm going to intentionally do some um, uppercase and lowercase. So I typed in give me a string um, now. And I'm going to hit enter. And now I'm going to do, 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 do. Where is my F8? Now I'm going to F8 through that. And then you can see what it returned with print string. If I look up a print string up here, print string is defined as printing of the self of the class mama dot s dot upper. So the upper here is the uppercase method. So we're applying the uppercase method to whatever we had in the empty and that empty is tied to s and that s is also tied to the input. And so it's that input which was give me a string. They asked me and I typed in give me a string now. So it took what I typed in and it ran it through this particular function that we defined from the class mama print string and it returned give me a string now in all capital letters. Uh, you could have had dot upper, you could have had dot lower, um, and it would have done the same thing. It's just that I wrote most of my stuff in lower because I wanted to have it the opposite so that you could see the contrast between the two pieces. Uh, so that's it for today. Again, I, I know if you're new to Python, classes kind of make sense to you. You're kind of like, all right, you got a class and you have individual definitions within it. Um, that, that, that makes sense from an organizational standpoint. And then the definitions we're creating and the local variables will always apply to that class. And we can, we'll get into hierarchies later on down the road. The self aspect is going to confuse people a lot at this moment, and I get it. But just code it. Code it and learn it. Because, and when you say, what the hell am I supposed to learn? Just code the way that this is coded and practice it. Because when I bring out more stuff in classes, it's going to make more sense to you when we see what we can do and can't do. When we have particular errors and we find out, oh, it's because... Uh, that function is named in two different classes. Uh, but in this class, because we're saying use this function on this self, it's going to use that particular variable. And in a different class, we're saying use the same named function, but with this self, and it's going to utilize a different variable. So it does have its purpose. Um, so take the code, learn the code, run with it. Uh, don't forget to do days one, two, three, and four in addition to five. And I will see you guys shortly for day number six.